Hi, this is Jack Dalton. I'm here with my good friend Michael Kim, with whom I've traveled all over the world, including Michael to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, the highest mountain in Africa, 15, 16 months ago. And so, Michael, here we are now in a much lower elevation in my hospital room. And at this hospital yesterday, I had brain surgery to remove a golf ball sized tumor from the top of, of my head. Um, as I've explained to you, Michael, the type of tumor I have is actually not of the brain itself, but of the membrane, the, the membrane that lines the brain, known as the meninges. And so this type of tumor is called the meningioma. And it, if you hold up that model, that this, yeah. I guess is this section of the human head, Michael, we can see the skull, well oh, that's the skin, but the skull right there, and then this gray line right underneath the skull, white skull, this is the membrane called the, meninge, the meninges. And my, my tumor grew out of this membrane down, compressing the brain, the area of the brain right below it, not of the brain, but just compressing it, flattening it. And it's over an area of the brain that controls uh, motor functions in the right side of my body. For this tumor is in the left hemisphere of the brain. And as it grew and grew, and we think it grew for t maybe 10 to 15 years, very slowly, it compressed the brain below it. Uh, and I guess it's reached critical mass now and it's begun to produce symptoms. Uh, the first symptom I had that, that was that, that we know uh, relatively certain uh, was attributable to the tumor was an event that took place at my health club on January 16th when at the conclusion of a workout the right side of my body, my legs and my arms went numb and became very weak. And that was an alarming uh, situation, Mike, as I'm sure you can imagine. Uh, what would you think if yeah. you had those symptoms? I mean, I think you thought you had a stroke, right? Yeah, I thought I had a stroke, and I was having a stroke. And so I went to the emergency room, and they too thought I was having a stroke. But then they did a CT of my head, that's a uh, specialized form of x-ray. And that x-ray revealed that in fact I had a golf ball sized meningioma or tumor pressing down on the top of my brain, on, on the left side, into the area uh, that controls motor motion on my right side. And they believe that that compression, now that the tumor has reached a critical mass, was causing a partial simple seizure. And that's what I experienced on January 16th at the health club. Well, because my tumor was symptomatic, um, there was really only one course of action, and that was removal of the tumor. My, as I told you, Michael, I talked to two neurologists, consulted with two neurologists, and five neurosurgeons, and every one of them said the tumor must be removed. There's no alternative. Well, that's less like a huge tumor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You're probably thinking, why wouldn't you remove it? Well, you know, for me, uh, Jack Dalton, the brain has always been the sacrosanct part of my body. I never want anybody to disturb or touch my brain. So the idea of, of removing part of my skull uh, to access the intracranial cavity, to take something out, getting in close proximity to my brain was something that disturbed me profoundly. Yeah, as you might even, imagine. Uh, even though this is pretty close to real size, right? Yeah, it's just smaller than life size. Yeah, yeah but then so if you put the, the then, golf ball there, you can see it's very big. In yeah. fact, Michael, I had an MRI uh, two days after the CT scan on January 16th, and that MRI is very disturbing. I mean, there's so much of the brain is compressed by this tumor. And in, in any case, um, as I said, I consulted with a number of uh, neurosurgeons and neurologists and finally found one that uh, was the right fit for me. And scheduled, he scheduled surgery for March 14th, yesterday, to remove, or what they technically call resection, the tumor. And that's a complex procedure. I don't think I've gone through that with you. Now, did you, uh, did you say what kind of, uh, what, what the name of the tumor was? Yeah, it's a meningioma from meninges, which is the name of the membrane that lines the outside of your brain. And I'm very lucky actually because my, my tumor is in the most accessible part of the brain. It's right below the top of my head. 
Uh, sometimes these meningiomas, sometimes these meningiomas take place in less accessible parts of the brain. For example, down here, yeah. or if you raise, if you raise your your uh, your model, you know they can be down here near the brain stem, and they can be behind the eye, and those are very difficult to access. Mine is the most accessible type of these tumors. I should say too that. 90% of these tumors are benign, and it's expected that mine is benign as well, based on the appearance on the MRI and what they saw when they went into my skull. Now, I just want to quickly explain to you this procedure because I think it's just fascinating what a neurosurgeon does to access something like this. Um, first of all, of course, they have to make an incision of the scalp, and that's roughly horseshoe shaped, uh, a flap that they then pull back to expose the skull itself. I'm generalizing, I'm generalizing greatly, but to pull back the scalp, the scalp uh, after they've incised the horseshoe shaped uh, flap. And then they drill through the skull. First they make one or two small holes. And then they have a specialized tool that uh, carves around the brain in a roughly kind of a rectangular or square area with uh, curved angles, curved, curved, uh, curved corners, corners, curved corners. And they remove that. Yeah. They take it out and they put it in a dish of saline solution. <laughs> That's pretty creepy, yeah. isn't it? I mean, that is the creepiest. That's like uh, Silence of the Lambs or Hannibal, right? <laughs> oh, terrible, terrible. I can hardly watch that scene in that movie. And then because my meningioma uh, is of the, that membrane, uh, that lines the, the, the outside of the brain, uh, it's right there when they remove the skull. I mean, there's no searching around for it. Yeah. There it is, as soon as they remove that piece of skull. And they have specialized sort of mapping technology that makes sure that they remove the piece of skull that's right over the meningioma in question. Then they have to remove or resection the meningioma, the tumor. And the tumor is actually very firm. It's very dense. In some places, it's almost calcified, and they use to get through that tough material. They use a tool not unlike a modern dentist uses to clean your teeth. It's sort of a sonic device uh, that grinds away the material and sucks it up at the same time. And and so they perform that technique on the tumor, grinding it away, and slowly the sides of the tumor, which have a membrane themselves, kind of fold in like a bag of rice that you're emptying, and. Uh, and they continue to do that until most of the tumor is gone. No, cut it. Well, didn't you say that part of it was around like a vein in your brain? Yeah. <clears throat> There's an important vein that runs down the center of your brain from the front of your head to the back of your head. And that's called the sagittal sinus. And it's very important, especially when the, when the, when the vein, in this part of the vein, the mid to the back, mm -hmm. that that vein not be tampered with, not be uh, damaged, because that could be catastrophic. And so they have to be very careful in removing a tumor that is right next to that vein, as was the case with my tumor. But in fact, my neurosurgeon said it, it wasn't uh, wrapped around the vein, it wasn't invading the vein, and it came away from the vein quite easily. And then I, I think he said another concern would be how, how embedded into the brain the tumor might be? Yeah, the next critical issue is the interface between the, the tumor and the brain. If that's a clean, distinct interface, that's the best case scenario. Sometimes the interface is more complicated than that. The brain, the tumor has embedded a little bit, more or less, mm -hmm. into the brain. And there you have to be very careful. Sometimes you leave tumor behind so you don't damage the brain. In my case, there was just a little bit of tumor beginning to embed the brain, and they think that was causing my symptoms. Um, and so they carefully removed that. And they got, and so the short, the, the conclusion of the resection, or the, the removal of the physical tumor, was that they got it all. They got all of the tumor. And that's important because if they get all of the tumor out, it reduces the risk of recurrence. And these, these tumors tend to recur. So now that they've finished removing this hard golf ball sized object from my, uh, that's pressing upon my brain, squishing it, um, that area then fills up with fluid, cerebral spinal fluid and blood. And slowly, sometimes not so slowly in fact, 
the brain will begin to expand up to fill that space again. Um, in concluding the surgery, they have to replace the membrane. Remember that the tumor is of the membrane, so the, the area of the membrane uh, above or next to the tumor is destroyed by it and by the surgery. And they replace that membrane with a synthetic. And that's amazing. So that's, that permanently stays there, or does, it, does the membrane kind of grow back? Well, the, no, the membrane doesn't grow back, but that synthetic stays there, and, and unbelievably, it becomes vascularized. Blood vessels begin to grow on, around, and through it, almost like it was really, real human yeah. tissue. I mean, we're really living in the, an amazing age of That's technology science. and science, yeah. Um, after they re repair the, uh, the membrane with synthetic, of course, they have to put the skull back. And they take it out of the saline dish and they fasten it into, pl into place using titanium screws, micro screws, and micro plates. And they leave one side of the skull right flush against uh, the rest of the skull. And that part that's flush against, those two parts that are flush against each other, will begin to fuse right away. And in a matter of uh, several months, uh, the area of the skull will heal itself and become fused back just like normal. Uh, it's pretty amazing how quickly that can happen. Um, the titanium, by the way, will not be detected by a metal detector, <laughs> so that's not a problem. And then they have to uh, suture the scalp and staple the scalp. And, you know, that's, in, that's important too, the scalp, the scalp flap, because if they remove the scalp, uh, there, you would lose that portion of the scalp. By just doing a flap, you maintain blood supply. Right. Nobody wants to have a, a flap, a, like a three or four inch flap of their scalp missing, because then you'd have to have a skin graft yeah. <laughs> and a toupee. Yeah. <laughs> um, so hopefully that works out well. You can see that I have a very big bandage over the top of my head. And uh, this, this new haircut I have, and most of you know that I had very long hair before until last week. This, this nice new haircut that I have, when they remove that bandage, won't look so nice. <laughs> more like Frankenstein for a while. I don't know, I think you, you still look a lot more respectable now than you did. Do you really? Yeah. Thank you. That's so kind of you yeah. to say that. Um, in any case... Um, you're, you're the only friend I know who's actually been scalped. Am I the only friend, friend you know that's had brain surgery? Uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, you know, th there were some preoperative symptoms that we now know are attributable to the tumor. I was tripping a lot on stairs, always catching my right foot, and taking hard falls. Yeah, I, I feel slightly bad about making fun of you about this. Yeah, yeah, he's witnessed some of my stumbles. Um, I didn't know what was wrong with me, but now we realize that I, the brain tumor was causing that. I was stubbing my toe my right toe all the time at home, and that too was caused, we think, by the brain tumor. And hopefully, those symptoms will be alleviated or at least reduced. Now, this is just the day after my surgery. How long has it been? Uh, I think it's been uh, 30 yeah, hours. Close to 30 hours. 30 yeah. hours. And I think, uh, you know, I, I seem pretty normal except for this weird thing on my head. Um, I feel good. Um, I. I think I'm being reasonably articulate. I think I have the same personality. In short, the same old Jack Dalton, which and my greatest fear was to lose the same old Jack Dalton, so I'm glad it's still here. And then uh, can, can, can continue to travel the world with you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you very much.